1440p has become an increasingly popular resolution, and it's no surprise why. 1440p is a great step up in detail over 1080p, but it isn't nearly as costly as 4K. Modern graphics cards can also push high refresh rates at this resolution, even with budget models. Because of this, 1440p is considered the sweet spot for many gamers, as it offers great picture clarity and allows for high frame rates, all for a competitive price. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos, or check out our website for the full article. Today, we'll be looking at our best picks for 1440p gaming monitors. We'll be breaking them down into a couple different categories, being the best performing, the best ultra-wide, the best budget, and lastly, some very strong notable mentions. As with all of our top picks, we choose these models based off our own testing, but we also consider other factors as well, such as price, availability, and feedback from the community. The 1440p gaming monitor segment in particular is extremely competitive, and there's a lot to choose from, so if there's something you really like that didn't make this list, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Let's start with one of the best 1440p gaming monitors we've tested, which is the Samsung Odyssey G7. This thing is a gaming beast, offering both great picture quality and gaming performance. It's one of the few 1440p monitors we've tested with a refresh rate of 240Hz. This higher refresh rate improves motion clarity and input latency compared to its 144Hz peers. So gaming on this will feel extra responsive, and will look great too, thanks to the superb response times. The G7 has the fastest response times we've measured on a VA panel, and it even beats out many IPS displays. On top of that, it has great response times at 60Hz with the same overdrive setting, which indicates well-tuned response times throughout the refresh rate range. It also features black frame insertion across a wide range, which is sure to be appreciated by those who use it. On top of being 240Hz, another standout feature is its VA panel. VA panels allow for much higher contrast than IPS or TN displays, so you'll get deep inky blacks and an overall better looking picture. The G7 also features local dimming to further improve contrast, but we've found the implementation to be pretty poor, so we don't recommend using it. One of the drawbacks of VA panels are the viewing angles, so they are expectedly mediocre here. But the G7's aggressive curvature helps mitigate the horizontal viewing angles, so colors will still look true during your gaming sessions. The other aspects of picture quality are also pretty solid. It has a high peak brightness and good reflection handling, so it'll be good for dark room or bright environments. It also supports HDR and has a wide color gamut, making it a good choice for sightseeing games. Overall, it's an awesome monitor for both gaming and media consumption. In the past, we've been hesitant to recommend the G7 because it suffered from numerous flickering issues, but it seems Samsung has fixed many of these issues with firmware updates. If you're looking for a 240 hertz monitor, then also consider the Alienware AW2721D. While it has the same resolution and refresh rate as the G7, just about every other aspect is quite different. The Alienware uses an IPS panel, is flat instead of curved, and has a native G-Sync module. Compared to the G7, the Alienware has a higher peak brightness, a wider color gamut, better viewing angles, and better ergonomics. Although expectedly it has worse contrast and black uniformity because of the IPS panel. They perform fairly similarly when it comes to input lag and response times, but the G7 does have a BFI feature, which the Alienware lacks. All in all, these are both exceptional gaming monitors who appeal to different crowds, and you'll have a great gaming experience with either one. If you want the sweet spot resolution of 1440p, but with just a bit more screen real estate, then an ultra-wide monitor is a great pick. Rather than a 16 by 9 aspect ratio of your typical 1440p monitor, an ultrawide has an aspect ratio of 21 by 9, which is a resolution of 3440 by 1440. Even with all these extra pixels, it's still less than 40% of a 4K display, so your frame rates won't take a huge dip. So you'll get high FPS, high clarity, and high immersion with an ultrawide gaming monitor. To deliver this, the LG 34 GN850 is one of our best picks for the job. It has a high refresh rate of 160 hertz, along with superb response times and low input lag. It's an IPS, so it has good viewing angles, but mediocre contrast. It has a wide color gamut and high peak brightness, but not quite high enough to give a meaningful HDR experience. The color accuracy is also great, thanks to the sRGB clamping mode, 
The ergonomics are somewhat limited, but this is expected with an ultrawide, and it should be good enough for most people. The LG is a great ultrawide for gaming, but it is a bit on the pricey side. If you're on a budget, but still want an ultrawide, then consider the Acer Nitro XV340CK. It performs a bit worse than the LG in most aspects, and it's definitely not suited for HDR gaming, but overall it still delivers a solid gaming experience. It's also quite a bit cheaper. Speaking of budget, if you want a 1440p gaming monitor without breaking the bank, then there's nothing quite like the Gigabyte M27Q. This is a monitor that punches well above its price class, competing with models that are twice its price. It has 170 hertz refresh rate and exceptional response time performance throughout the refresh rate range. On top of that, it has very low input lag and supports BFI, so with just these aspects alone, it's a great pick for gaming. But it doesn't end there. The M27Q has a few tricks up its sleeve, most notably its KVM switch. This allows you to use two computers with one set of peripherals, and you can learn more about how it works in our video here. For picture quality, this monitor continues to excel. It has a great peak brightness and very good viewing angles thanks to the IPS display. Out of the box, it has great color accuracy in the sRGB mode, and it has nearly perfect coverage of the Adobe RGB color space. This makes it a great pick for color professionals working in SDR who need to ensure they see all the vibrant hues in their media. It's far from perfect though. Because of the IPS panel, it has mediocre contrast and the black uniformity on our unit was subpar. This monitor also has a couple quirks to be aware of. First, it's using a BGR subpixel layout, so text may not always be as clear as its 1440p peers, although it's not a big deal for gaming. Also, we've seen reports online of users claiming this monitor can't display a 1440p 120Hz signal from an Xbox Series X. We tested this for ourselves and got the same results, so keep that in mind if you plan on using it with your console. We don't normally test console compatibility with our monitors, but we do plan on adding it to a future test bench later this year. Now let's get into the notable mentions, and there's a lot to go over here. Like I said earlier, the 1440p gaming monitor segment is extremely competitive, so any one of these picks could easily be the best pick for you. Let's start with a Dell S27 21DGF. It's a 27-inch 165Hz IPS gaming monitor, and it performs well across the board. First, it has a remarkable response time and low input lag, so the gaming experience will be great. This monitor in particular is also great for office work because of its excellent ergonomics, high peak brightness, and great reflection handling. Unfortunately, it has lower than average contrast, and our unit had poor black uniformity, so it's not a great pick for watching movies in the dark. Up next is the Lenovo Legion Y27Q-20. It's one of the only Lenovo monitors we reviewed, but it's a very good sleeper pick. It has a fairly unassuming design with good build quality and ergonomics. And just like the others on this list, it's exceptional for gaming, thanks to the 165Hz refresh rate, fast response times, and low input lag. It has a good peak brightness and reflection handling, so it'll perform well in an office setting. It features a wide color gamut, and the out-of-the-box color accuracy is nearly perfect in the sRGB mode. Just like others on this list, it has poor contrast and black uniformity. So overall, it's a great pick for gaming enthusiasts who also do a lot of office work. Another pick many of you may be familiar with is the LG 27GN850. This is the successor to the very popular 27GL850, and performs very much the same, if not slightly better. It has a refresh rate of 144Hz, which is funnily enough the slowest on this list. That said, it's still plenty high to deliver a smooth gaming experience. The response times are exceptional at both the max refresh rate and 60 hertz, and input lag is low. Like the other notable mentions, it lacks a BFI feature, although this won't be a big deal to most gamers. The ergonomics are somewhat limited and there's no USB hub, so it's not the most ideal pick for an office setting. Though it's still a good pick for color professionals thanks to the wide gamut and good color accuracy. And just like any of the others on this list, it's sure to be a solid pick. So what do you think of our picks? Have you bought one? Let us know below, and be sure to let us know if there's any other models you recommend. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. You can check out all of the picks on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, or become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.